Speaking of sand and ceramic, oh yeah, we're going to talk about network solids. Yeah. Hey, in a network solid, it's a molecule that has all covalent bonds. Now, interesting thing with this, of course, we've talked about this. Covalent bonds are the strongest of all bonds. They have a strength of 100. Yes. So only, and these only applies to two varieties of elements. Yes. Two elements. This only applies to carbon. Carbon and. And sulfur. silicon. Oh, silicon. Sorry, not silicon. You're still awake. You're still asleep. It's an S element. All right. The examples of this are uh, diamonds. I'd love to have show you diamonds, but I don't have one. My wife has a diamond. Diamonds. They are a girl's best friend. Graphite. Quartz. These are the big three to remember for um, these things. And sand, Mr. Sands was just talking about. Sand, mm -hmm. of course, is uh, quartz, silicon dioxide, and has a very, very high um, boiling point, a melting point, too, for that mm -hmm. matter. All right, so diamonds here. And yep. this is graphite. Graphite, by the way, is in a pencil. Yep. So now, go ahead. real quick, um, diamonds, very, very hard. Yes. Okay. And those are held together by uh, these tetrahedral, tetrahedrally arranged uh, carbon atoms. And so that that's very strong, um, you know, a, a force value of 100, like we were talking about. Now the graphite, notice they're held together in these sheets. The sheets are kind of cool. You got these little hexagons that are stuck together, and you know graphite, it's kind of slippery. That's why your pencil moves across your yeah. paper. It's because those sheets look, kind of stack on top of each other. They don't attract to each other really well, so they they slide across each other, which is what makes graphite slippery. And the weak bond of the layers is held together by London dispersion forces. Yeah. That's why when you write with a pencil, it's going to come off on the paper, mm -hmm. but it's very, very strong, sticking yeah. in the flat plane. Like, um, locks in your doors, they use graphite as a lubricant. They just yep. shoot it in there, and it makes it all slippery. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's actually one other uh, allotrope of carbon, too, that we don't really talk about a whole lot. That's Bucky called buckyball. Bucky yeah. And it basically looks like a soccer ball. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, they're actually doing a lot of research with it now, of, like putting things in the buckyball and using it to deliver things in really small quantities. Yeah. So here, folks, interesting picture. This is actually Mr. Sams was talking about a buckyball, and this is the uh, uh, structure of the buckyball. These are all carbons held together in a tetra... No, actually in a... Uh, uh, they're sp2, aren't they? No, I, I actually didn't. They're all held together by three. They're really three. planar, though, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. but that's what buckyball sure. yeah. looks like. <laughs> yeah. These are also called fullerenes. So the, uh, the person that uh, came up with these is Buckminster Fuller. So Bucky from Buckminster and or fullerenes from this also. Yeah. So yeah, that's so. that's kind of cool, I think. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the buckyball. So I think it's intriguing to kind of look at that. All right. And uh, graphite yeah, again. Graphite yeah. Letters. And then actually, let's take a look real quickly. This is the silicon oxides are the ones that uh, primarily, there's a number of varieties. Yep. They call silicates. Some of these are silicates. Yep. Oh, and then tetrahedral. Uh, yep. And then you've got S's and O's, basically. Mm -hmm. And the S, I believe, is the yellow. Yeah. And then yep. the, R, the red is the oxygen in this picture. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so if you see SI's and O's, you've got a um, network. 